The Fantastic Four is a group that a lot of people have been patiently waiting for me to make a video about, and it's easy to see why. I mean, they're arguably the most iconic team in Marvel history, dating way back to the 1960s, and still remaining extremely popular today. However, the road to the movies has been anything but easy, with the original movie not even being released properly, and the other three not exactly being fantastic by any means. However, an attempt was made in the 90s, in between the Roger Corman movie and the two Tim Story ones, to bring the Fantastic Four to the big screen by Michael Chabin. So, what if it happened? Now, to understand where the Fantastic Four were cinematically at this point, we have to go back a bit to the 1980s, when a man named Bernd Kinger, a German film producer most well-known for his work on The NeverEnding Story, secured the rights to make a Fantastic Four movie in 1986. He and his production company, New Constantin Films, would have until late 1992 to begin principal photography on the movie, or else forfeit the rights and risk being sued and fined for breach of contract. Now, after attempts to get major studios involved proved fruitless, and with Marvel refusing to give them an extension, Roger Corman would be brought in to direct the movie on a shoestring million dollar budget. The result was the Fantastic Four movie we got in 1994, or should I say the one we didn't get, because it was never even officially released. You see, Avia Rod, an executive at Marvel, actually gave the production money back to Ike Kinger. So essentially, the movie was so bad that Marvel actually paid Ike Kinger and Corman not to release it. Wow. So now with the contractually obligated movie made and not released, Ikinger now had a lot more time to shop the project around. So now 20th Century Fox had finally agreed to produce a Fantastic Four movie, with Ikinger once again serving as a producer. Avi Arad would actually be a part of the production this time around as an executive producer. Arad would tap Chris Columbus, the director of Mrs. Doubtfire and the first two Home Alone movies to direct. Columbus would accept the job, and production was set to begin under his own studio, 1492 Pictures. Now Michael Chabin, author of The Wonder Boys, would go to 1492 to pitch his own take on the Fantastic Four. He was such a mega fan that he apparently wore a Fantastic Four pin on his jacket during the meeting he had with them. So now, Chapin's version would actually take place in a world where the 1960s never really ended. You see, the style and mindset of the 60s will remain intact, and the optimism that a lot of Americans lost after JFK's assassination would never have been lost. Now, Chapin thought that the Fantastic Four would work best in the 60s, since they were created before all these political events would change the image of America forever, before the Watergate scandal, before the war in Vietnam, and before the AIDS epidemic. In this world, the Cold War is still ongoing, in the 1990s, and New York City would be the shining beacon of freedom, with the Baxter Building and the Fantastic Four right at the middle of it. Now, this movie apparently would have actually skipped over the origin story, since Chapin believed that the science behind them getting their powers just wouldn't hold up under scientific scrutiny. He's kind of got a point there, in my opinion. So instead, we see the Fantastic Four have actually been around for 20 or so years, and the origin would have been explained away through a guided tour given to a group of school children at the Baxter Building. Doctor Doom would, of course, be the main villain. In this movie, he'd be studying various timelines, as he's always felt that this world's history just isn't right. So he determines that one person survived in their timeline is what's caused this timeline. So now, who this person would be is actually unknown, although I'd bet money on John F. Kennedy, since as I said, he wouldn't have been assassinated in this timeline. So now, Doom's plan would be to travel back in time and kill JFK, or whoever else it is, to set the timeline back to the one that we're familiar with, a timeline that he can more easily control. 
Meanwhile, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Girl will be going through some issues. You see, they're about to get married, but Sue isn't so sure about marrying him, because she's worried about becoming just Mrs. Richards and losing her individual identity. So throughout the movie, she'd eventually find the confidence to marry Reed, and thus matures into her new role of the Invisible Woman. Now, apparently Sue would have gone through this development during her time as a hostage for the Soviets. They would brainwash her into attacking her own teammates. However, after this is all settled, they go on a time-traveling adventure to the past, and attempt to stop Doctor Doom from killing his target. However, this version was ultimately rejected. So what do I think of Michael Chabin's version of Fantastic Four? Honestly, it sounds really good to me. I don't know how other people would feel about it, at least at the time. I think a movie like this nowadays would probably fare really well because, you know, people complain that a lot of Marvel movies feel the same because they all have something to do with each other. But when you do a movie, you know, set in the past, um, or well, this one wouldn't be set in the past. You get what I mean? Like, a movie that would be so different because it would be like a different kind of Earth, that would, that would probably be interesting. A lot of people, I think, would would bite on that today but in the 90s i don't know i i really don't know if people would like this this take in the 90s it might have been considered ahead of its time uh but i do like it i think that would be a really interesting idea to kind of see you know what people thought america would be like by the end of the 20th century but like you know brought to film that would have been really interesting to see and you know michael chabin he's a great he's a huge fantastic four fan so I have no doubt that he would have done it in a way that was respectful to the characters. And honestly, I really like the arc they had planned for Sue Storm. I think it sounds great. I, I really like the idea of a woman who is not comfortable with getting married because she's worried about just becoming, you know, Mrs. So-and-so. I think that's a real issue that a lot of women have. I've seen it happen before. And I think that a lot of people would actually like that storyline. I think it would really set her apart from other female super superhero characters you know and it would really be awesome to see this you know this family dynamic you know the fantastic four they're marvel's first family and you know their banter has always been so entertaining even in the bad movies in my opinion and you know with somebody that's writing a script that has respect for these characters i think it would be really you know fantastic uh dr doom as the villain of course that makes sense i know some people would argue that you know the mole man should have been you know the first fantastic four movie villain and i understand that but you know i also understand why they kept using dr doom because dr doom is a really really popular villain he's on par with darth vader he's like up there as far as you know greatest villains of all time but unfortunately the movies have just never done him justice and i'm really hoping the mcu is able to turn that around for damn sure and not to mention this this would be a time travel movie. This would be a Marvel movie about time travel, you know, like 20 years almost, you know, before or actually more than 20 years before Avengers Endgame did it. And, you know, say what you will. Some people say time travel movies are gimmicky, but people don't ever get sick of those, do they? Time travel movies almost always do really well. So, you know, and then you throw in the superhero element of it. I honestly think this movie sounds like it could have had potential. But as I said, I don't know if a 90s inspired by the 60s would really appeal to actual 90s cinema goers. It might have been considered ahead of its time. Maybe this movie would have done better now than it would have been in the 90s. You know, I've heard a lot of people say that they hope the Fantastic Four movie the MCU is doing is in the 60s. I've heard a lot of people say it should be a period piece. You know, it might, maybe Michael Chapin was right. Maybe the Fantastic Four don't work in modern day. Uh, we'll see, I guess. Like, if the MCU does them in modern day really well, I'll eat my words. But, you know, maybe Chapin had a point about the Fantastic Four working better in the 60s. 60s. Uh, or it wouldn't be the 60s. You, you get what I mean. I'm getting confused. But <laughs> it, it would just be interesting, you know? Uh, and seeing John F. Kennedy, or if that was who they were going to do, as like a major Marvel character, well, because he would be a major Marvel character, that would be really interesting, you know? Um, and just to see this kind of idea like America that results from him not dying, that would just, it would just be really interesting to see that. I don't know if the scale uh, would be up to snuff. Like, I don't know if Fox would be willing to, you know, to pay to make this like alternate America, but if they were willing to shout out the money, I think this could be a very visually stunning movie. You know, nobody's ever complained about Chris Columbus, you know, not understanding the scale and the magic of bringing a big, magical world to life. Just look at the first two Harry Potter movies, if you don't believe me. Well, then again, he did Percy Jackson. That was kind of disappointing. But you, you get the idea. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Chris Columbus directing, Michael Chabin, a huge Fantastic Four fan and a genuine author writing the script. And, you know, just, it's a great team. 
Like, it, it just, it sounds like it would tick so many boxes, but maybe it would have been ahead of its time. Maybe people wouldn't have been ready for it. Maybe something would have been lost in translation and it might have sucked. I don't know, but I personally think that this would have been a absolutely fantastic, fantastic four movie. But let me know in the comments down below what you think of this idea. Do you love it or do you hate it? Uh, make sure you let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and sharing it with all of your friends and all your various social media platforms. And speaking of social media, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Rinzer underscore productions. I'll see you all tomorrow morning in the next video.